ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. There's a yellow ribbon tied to one of the branches, light yellow, faded with time. A tiny splash of colour in the blackness of the thicket, hanging from it, a bronze key. Someone hid the key in the bush and attached the yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open and just take it. Surely not a coincidence. Huh? And I need the fatty to get his feet amputated because the smell is killing me. We can't always get what we want. God damn it, Dennis. You know I can't help it. Sorry, fucko. These guys won't help you. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up pushes the window open, grabs the key from the hawthorn branch and slides it across the table to you. The key is brass. Workshop spare is etched to its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the horn in? I'm tired of listening to your shit. Don't thank me. I don't give two shits about your key. There is a silence around this man's words. Unlike Titus, they're afraid of him. That's the type of respect he commands. Didn't even know it was there. Boys. No idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. It could open the door in the kitchen. The blue door. It says workshop spare. Maybe there's a workshop there? It's worth a try. Hi again, Chandan. Oh, a committee. How interesting. And if I may ask, Shandar, what is this committee about? He's all bemused skepticism. He doesn't actually care what you want with his friend. God, of course it is. My friend is always trying to convince me I need a little more responsibility. As though I don't have enough going on already. In any case, I would love to help. But the thing is, I don't know where he is. We don't talk about everything, you see. He might have mentioned something about making a tour of some historical sites up the coast. In an unofficial capacity, of course. I guess you will. Bye-bye, gendarme. I couldn't possibly shower thanks on you as enthusiastically as my wife has, but I am grateful for your assistance, officer. He tries to play it cool, remain professorial, but inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. Good. Okay. And? Completely empty? No locusts? No phasmid either? That's not ideal, but... It just means the Insulindian phasmid is even more clever than we thought. 
She's engaging in a well-known self-deception called motivated reasoning. You should correct them. Of course, more clever. You're dealing with a subject near and dear to their hearts. It might behove you to tread lightly. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locusts and escaped. This is good news, though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Another trip to the reeds. Of course we have. Wait, Morel. He may have a point. We have an obligation to rule out other hypotheses. You're right, dear. It's a fair point. But what other explanation could there be? Pardon me. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now. And brought some great news, too. My gratitude and... The gratitude of the Société Cryptozoologique de Ravachol is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft? Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. You have your suspicions, but nothing you can form into a viable explanation. Really, officer? We can take it from here. Yes, sweetie, we've already taken too much of your time. Hell no. I had no idea. And I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks, but dishonesty, disloyalty, are not one of them. Thanks. He's still glad his friend stood up for him. see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. The key fits the dimple lock. It takes a bit of effort to turn it after all these years, but then the lock clicks. Dust rises before you like mist. A tomb? Haunted by regal spirits from distant ages. No. Smells like engine grease and cut wood. A workshop. This small elevator is dimly lit by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open, inviting you to step inside. Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right and just enough room for two people to fit in. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10th July, 88. There are large rectangular buttons, Monte, Descente, 
and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. That it does. I say, let's brave it. At the end of the last century, look on the bright side. If it fails, we will only sustain minor injuries. I'm talking three, maybe four months in the hospital. Maximum five. It appears his whole enthusiasm is sarcastic. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. So this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up, a long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. The lieutenant looks around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. Looks like it. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've seen one of the hardies bang away at it. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, unlike everything else here, are new. Three weeks maximum, from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week too. You know, officer. This is good. He likes it. There's a little smile there, in the dark of the workshop. It was a stereo investigation after all. It has now converged with our main investigation adding a new fact to consider. It means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route leading to the roof. The roof from where you can shoot our victim. This is significant. This prince officer could be the prince of our killer. And if not, at least there are a good argument for this ruby doing it to present to Titus. Large prince most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The soles have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. No, these little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me, or some kind of foreign print. Hard to say. St the size looks about the same, actually. They are not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. I wouldn't rule out Ruby coming here yet. This isn't an argument against her. People change shoes, you know. But it's not an argument for her either. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. You 
can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside, bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around everywhere. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions here. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. You lean closer to the peephole instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. This is the inside of the barred door you've seen before. 